it's a beautiful Friday. Did I say Friday? Don't mind me. Where am I going to? It's a Monday. Not to worry. Just take that to the bank, okay? And it's time for us to sit back, relax once more, and take a look at what is happening in this great continent of ours, Africa, on the program, Africa This Course, and I am Wilson Marshall. Talking about what we want to discuss today, it makes me laugh. And it makes me sit down, wonder what is really happening in this great continent. We're giving out such light to DR Congo, where people are protesting massively because of what is happening in that country. The president, Joseph Kabila, yeah, you can see them protesting already. Tenor, second term in office, expired two years ago, and now the man is refusing to go. And they're getting set for yet another election come December or thereabouts. And something was introduced that didn't go down to well with these people you are seeing. Yes, voting machine. You see that adieu machine? They are saying that they don't want anything about this machine. And the political situation in DR Congo is very, very tense. You can feel it, you can touch it, you can smell it, you can almost taste it because we have a lot of agitators there. The big question now is, what is the root of all this problem? Is it the presence of Joseph Kabila or the disbandment of two top opposition leaders who partaking in the election? Or is it really the machine they are worried about? And a half seasoned analyst will be in the studio to throw more light on what you're seeing on the screen. Sitting close to me, I have uh, a clergyman, a human rights activist. We talk about local and international politics. He's well grounded. Join me, welcome, Reverend Humphrey Arega. Welcome to the show, sir. I appreciate your coming. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. All right. And sitting very close to him is a legal practitioner, a human rights activist, and environmentalist. We talk about international and national politics. He's well grounded. Jeremy, welcome, Barrister Chima Williams. Barrister, welcome to the show. Thank you, Wilson. I appreciate your coming. Thank all you. Right. Welcome, audience. Yeah, the stiff out the handshake, the foot of the handshake. So you're going to transport the handshake <laughs> to Barrister. We <laughs> Robinson. been seeing. Handshake across. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barrister Robinson, Imade, a legal practitioner, yes, an agriculturist, a human rights activist, local and international politics is well uh, grounded. Welcome to the show, sir. Please, Barrister Chima, you can just translate okay. the handshake. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. now, now yeah. to Red Ray. Okay. Yeah, and of and course to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. And now we're having a very serious situation in DR Congo. I know that once a particular situation starts off in uh, a, a country, a state, or a local government in Africa, and it's able to get international recognition, it spreads uncontrollably. And now it has started from that country, Democratic Republic of Congo. There is a massive protest right now with what is happening. I really want you to take it up from there, Reverend. What do you see that is really making the citizens of the Aru Congo to be agitated? What's the big deal? What is the big deal? I'm sure every person who has been going with the politics of the Aru Congo we not see what is happening as a surprise. Because since the tenor of Kabila came to a conclusion, it's been one deception after another. Because like other Africans, and I also keep telling people, it's not the age or thing about Africa. I think it's just about the African uh, what is ingrained in the African leadership for perpetuity and for self-aggrandizement. This is a young man, so we won't talk of uh, people like uh, uh, the man in Cameroon who has ruled for 30-something years, and uh, that man. This is a young man who took over from his father. One would have thought that as a young man, he would either bring some developmental uh, uh, strides to pass and try to unite the country and lead the country forward. But the, the people have been very much dissatisfied with his leadership style, with his autocratic behavior and all. The church has mediated and 
he has neglected every mediation efforts. Every decision that has been jointly taken has been pushed aside by him. And so the people have lost total confidence. Whatever Kabila says is no longer regarded as a word that can be, uh, that can be used. And now you are also seeing the, they have come to the issue of machine, which is also a headache to the African continent. Because you, see, you saw what happened in Kenya during the election. The issue was the machine, people manipulating the machine within the, 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 the confines of the control room that generated a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of problems. So people are not trusting him. And now that you are trying to say, OK, you have disqualified two opposition who are supposed to be the very credible oppositions. All he wants is to install the person who will do his bit, who he can rule from behind. And people know that. And then you are bringing in machine that nobody knows anything about. People are not educated to the point of using these machines. And they're saying, well, we don't even know how you went to procure these machines, whether you have already configured it. Don't forget, I'm sure my uh, panelists will also learn. Two days ago, I was reading something about even the American politics, mm -hmm. where they said the machine <laughs> is transferring the votes of one person to another. Mm -hmm. If Americans, as, as, as wise and as, as educationally critical as they are, can be experiencing that, mm -hmm. one of these uh, Democratic Republic, who are whose uh, population are also uh, not as educated and enlightened. Mm. So they have every reason to be very much afraid of, of the fact that whatever Kabila is doing, is doing it to benefit him and to disinherit the average uh, member of the society, their voting rights. All right. You were saying that whatever Kabila is doing, he's doing it to uh, this and chance, so to speak, the persons or the citizens of DR Congo come the election that should need to take place in December or January about. Okay. Barrister Chima Williams, is this a trust issue or an issue that is embroidered in fear? Well, uh, you see, um, when there is lack of trust, Fear definitely becomes the um, presentation or representation of that lack of trust. Okay, um, the situation in the Congo, as it relates to the election, inputs that may happen may happen in December 2018. An average. The Congolese will be afraid of the situation because it is shrouded in secrecy and un unknown. Mm -hmm. First is that, don't forget, Joseph Kabila was supposed to have handed over in 2016. What happened? He is still president. And there was an agreement, an accord entered in 2016, December 31st, 2016, for a transition to culminate into an election on the 31st of December 2018, two years. Now, the constitution of the Arab Congo has made it explicitly clear that you cannot run for more than two terms. We see that there have been moves to change the constitution so that there will be an open-ended, you know, uh, period for Joseph Kabila to remain in power. And he did not learn from history, or he has refused to learn from history, what led to the ouster of his father. And when people thought that, as my reverend have rightly pointed out, that being a young man, that one would have thought that he has many more years in front of him, he would have tried to unite the people and then try to correct the mistakes of his father. Okay, but here we're seeing a young man that is even trying to be worse than his father. Okay, and then forgetting the price that his father paid for that level of arrogance, intimidation, and high handedness. And here he is going round the circle again. Now, first is that outside of the disqualification of the two prominent opposition personalities, 
the introduction of a uh, voting machine, Joseph Kabila has not made it clear. Nobody knows whether he still wants to run or not. Yeah. And I think that is even the biggest fear. Okay? <clears throat> you have an election that is to take place by December, and this is, we are entering almost November. November. Two months to an election. The president have not said, I am going to run, I am not going to run. Rather, he is introducing things that are unknown to the people. Now, it is not, I don't think that the fears of the average DR Congolese is the introduction of the voting machine. No, that's not the problem. The problem is how is it introduced? Hmm. How, how is, is it, it introduced? introduced? Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. What are the parameters, garbage in, garbage out, mm. have the citizens been educated on how to even use the machine, including the electoral umpire? Mm. Let's come back in Nigeria here. We'll, we'll, come, back. Okay. we'll come back to Nigeria now, you just okay. have because, because, because you have the right to draw an uh, analogy yeah. between what is happening in Congo and, of course, what they're proposing in Nigeria. Barrister, you've listened to both of them. Yeah. We talked about the fear factor. We'll talk about the uh, this illusion, in, so to speak, of these people by introducing what, according to uh, Barista Chima, they are not really aware of it. They don't know how it operates. Is that enough to go out there in the street to start causing unrest in that one peaceful country? In that one peaceful country, I don't know whether <laughs> at any point in time. DR Congo has been peaceful. Mm. It's been crisis upon crisis, even from the uh, pre-colonial times mm. in the DR Congo. But talking about the machines, I think the fears are not unfounded. As Chima said, nobody can be sure that Kabila is not contesting the elections, even when it is clear that legally he's disqualified. He's mm. not uh, supposed to contest. But then, if you look at the population of DR Congo, over 80 million people, those registered to vote, the reports say, are 46 million people. Mm. How many of the eligible voters are literate? How many of them can use the machines? If you look at the infrastructural uh, position of the DR Congo, then you now wonder, and you know the vast land the second largest, they say, in Africa. How are they going to be able to send these machines around? And don't forget that even when these machines were tested in the parliament, many of them did not work. The South Korean machines, uh, the DR Congo people are saying loud and clear that even in South Korea, the machines were rejected. They were not used in their own country. And these machines are being introduced by a man that has lost the confidence totally of the people. So we have a situation where the people are absolutely uh, 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 untrusting of their president. They cannot explain why he's still in power, where his tenure, after many years, uh, two terms of five, uh, of five years each has elapsed since December 2016, he is still there. Like has been said, the credible positions have been disqualified. He is running the place as though, like the, the, they say in the Bible, uh, my father chastised me with, <coughs> with sticks <laughs> and whips, but I would chastise him with swords and scorpions. That's the position that we are. Is he using the snakes and scorpions? Is he the president of the people? Is he president of a few? Why are the majority of the people protesting? Why is he introducing a machine that is absolutely new to the people? that they will see first on the voting day, in spite of the huge illiterate population. Why, are, why, why would they not give up when even during the demonstration, I'm sure they use the best of the machines, some failed. Why the insistence? Is democracy not a, a, a <clears throat> for the people, by the people, and of the people? And if the people say, we don't want this, why would they not listen to the people? Hmm. Those are the issues. If you ask me, the DR Congo people do not believe 
in the election process at all. They don't believe in they the election believe, process. Yes, as right. is uh, put forward by Kabila. Okay. Is it about belief? Because what he says is they don't believe in the election process put forward by the president. Should you call him de facto president now? Because he's uh, still the president. Uh, okay, he's still the president. He's still the one running the affairs, even after his tenure elapsed two years ago, but he's still very much on the ground. Yes, I, I, that is the, base, the issue. You see, hmm. leadership is not in position, leadership is influence. Once you have lost the influence of the people, you have lost your leadership potentials. Hmm. As far as DROC people are concerned, they don't see Kabila as a president. They see him as an imposition, an imposture. And for that reason, you see, one of the things that the African nations do to subvert the people's will is to manipulate the electoral process, which means the electoral umpire is not an unbiased umpire. It's manipulated from behind by governments. And once you have that structure, there's also already a lot of trust. Two is the fact that they, they, they manipulate uh, election process close to when election is going to hold. Mm. You see, in, in civilized countries, elections processes are known over the period. People, are, people know all that it is. They are, the issues are tested, they are verified, and people have confidence that this thing works. In Africa, it's not like that. It comes in in a very harsh manner and is, is, is run through the people's truth. And at the end of the day, you are bringing things that they will not by themselves say is true. Kabila has made it very difficult for anybody, whether it is even the citizens or outside the country, to believe whatever he says. And like our, my parents have said, he has not even openly said he's not contesting. So that is a much more problematic thing. So you don't even know who is going to win, who is going for the election. So how are you sure that there is even going to be an election at all? That's another thing. Are you sure that he's not going to create or he's creating confusion so that there could be another push to say, okay, the environment so is not spare. Let us run. Okay, <laughs> we'll shift it again for another six months or one year. He wants to perpetuate himself in power by illegal means. Hmm. And that's why he's doing all this thing that he's doing. So we, 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 I think, I, I don't know how the Africans can be educated on the propriety of leadership. That is not for self, but it's for the people. And if the people do not understand, how will you bring something at the twin light of, a, of an election for what people have no idea about? When even in the demonstration, there is failure. Two, the, 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 the energy situation in, in the DROC is not even the one that you can say, okay, it, it's constant. So you can't even say that the machine will work. And even like we're trying to draw, even in Nigeria, where we're talking, the same thing we're, we're experiencing somehow, even though we, we, we uh, seem to be a little bit much better than DROC in the issue of some of these issues. But the same problem, because we are not allowing things to work in the way it should work. I think the, we should begin to insulate the electoral process from the executive, from the president, mm. so that the people can be, that I can read the people on a very neutral level. So people can see the transparency in it. Once there is no transparency, there's bound to be mistrust. And once there's mistrust, what you see, that's what you are seeing. Wow. Ah, are you sure? People, people, mm. people, people may just rise up like and say there's no election at all because we don't want. Okay. And you see, he may also not, sometimes people don't know that the people may have power to do whatever they want to do. They might just wake up when they're chasing out of the palace. All right. Um, <laughs> it's not possible because you think you are the army. It's not okay. true. Let's look at what happened in the Ivory Coast. This is my people. Where are you? the president and the leadership were chased out of, off, chased out of the country. Okay. All right. Let, let's see. Hope it won't degenerate to that. Yeah, what happened in Ivory Coast or in Bagbo. All right. Now, from what he said, he said it will just be a ploy by Joseph Kabila to either extend or cancel the election to extend his stay in office. Now, when this protest started, there is a report that he allowed the protest to take its course. But at some various points, he chose to place military personnel, security agents, to forestall law and order. In this game, so to speak, is he the puppet master? Or whatever they are doing right now, he'll be the one to gain from it. Yeah, you see, when history repeats itself mm. the cost or the price is always more costlier than it was before and the fact that you know joseph kabila thinks that he understands 
the workings of the minds of the people will be his abattros. Because we've seen situations where political leaders have, you know, tried to create a scenario to benefit them. But at the end of the day, it becomes a game plan that will go out of their hands. Okay? Now, of course, two months to an election, there is no known candidate for any of the political parties, especially the ruling party. Because Mr. President has not said, I am running or I am not running. Because only when Mr. President says, I am running, that you know that, you know, the ruling party has a candidate. Or when he says, I am not running, then he opens the space for his lieutenants, you know, to begin to contest among themselves who replaces him. Mm. But here, there is no such thing being played out. So what does it tell you? It tells you that the man first and foremost, is not interested in living power. Let us not pretend about it. Because even in the worst of civilian administrations, two months to election, you see some political activities happening from all angles. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, just to create tension it will not be out of place for Kabila's, you know, uh, think masters. Because, of course, the dictators still have their think tanks, small think tanks that be are beneficiaries of the dictatorship that works along with them to think out, you know, such notorious ideas mm -hmm. that would be to the disadvantage of the people to perpetuate, perpetuate their master in power. All right. So, bring up this issue. You know, one, <clears throat> the people are illiterate and they've never seen this before. It's not been demonstrated. And then bring the worst of it all. Don't even try the one that, you know, uh, <laughs> would say within a period of time they can understand it. Bring the one that has been rejected. So they, definitely, the elites among the opposition will mm. tell them that this has not worked in their own home countries. Mm. So why bring it here? And then this type of situation will arise. All right. Okay? Oh. And now, when this type of situation arises, mm. his calculation will be that, yes, we can allow things so long as it doesn't touch me. Mm. Let them continue to make noise. Let them continue to, mm. you know, demonstrate. And then we'll just use it and tell the whole world, look, we are good Democrats. You see, we didn't stop them from expressing themselves. Mm. And by their expression, we don't want things to degenerate. So this election may not necessarily have to happen. Interesting. Let's, let's put things in order mm. and then <laughs> get enough time to educate them. Since they say they don't understand the workings <laughs> of this machine, and it may take at least one year for them to understand it. <laughs> All right. Of course, you are not going to say, Mr. <laughs> Kabila, get out of there. <laughs> OK. But unfortunately, mm. unfortunately, yeah. when the global voice have started telling Mr. Kabila, be very careful. Mm. Do not do this. Let this election happen. OK. You just hold. I don't. I don't <laughs> want what my <laughs> brother has said, you know, to come to pass. All right. But mm. one thing that Joseph Kabila should mm. be warned about mm. is that he should remember the fate of his father. All right. Remember the fate. Let it not repeat itself. again in his house. Okay. Now let me come to you, Barrister Robinson. He used a word, notorious, and added another word, idea, to it. Now, is it a crime to go digital? Uh, this man wants the Aero Congo <laughs> to be digitalized. He, he wants them to flow with the same format globally. They're not going for machine, rather you using the manual, Herculean method of electioneering. Why don't you make it easy for yourself? Is it a crime? Is, is that uh, bad? Uh, the clergyman said, <clears throat> if you are bringing about change, mm. you prepare the people for change. And that is purely an axiom of life. We are talking about bring, going digital and breaking the digital machine on the day of 
voting mm -hmm. for the people to see, apart from the parliamentarians and a few others that were there on the day it was demonstrated. Mm -hmm. And the demonstration didn't record the 100% success. What we are talking about here is an election where over 46 million people will be voting. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the machines he's bringing are put together to understand one language, French. In the DR Congo, there are three or four other languages that are used, that are known. French will be the official language. But there are other languages that are used across the country. And those are the languages that the mass of the voters know. The machine will not understand what the language that the voters understand. And the voters will not understand the workings of the machine. Is that how to go digital? If you ask me, yes, it is true that Kabila has a candidate he's flouting. But I'm sure that the candidate himself is not sure <laughs> that Kabila <laughs> is not contesting the election. Even the candidate isn't sure. No, no. He has gone to a place or two with him, saying this is the man uh, to vote for. But even the man in going with him is certainly not sure that Kabila means what he's saying. It is also possible that I told the man, Oh, you come front, at the end of the day, there will be no elections. But be sure I'll hand over to you. And the one will go about talking. The people are not adverse to digitalization. They are saying presidential election is not a platform to test things, to test machines. Let us do these elections. If, uh, if you ask me, in Nigeria, uh, during the uh, um, uh, Abiola King Ibe election, we did the option A4. Yeah. That is what the people of Congo, they are, are looking for just now. They want to be able to see, we voted for this man, and not the machine telling you, this was the man you voted for. Because they don't trust the umpire. Look at their independent national electoral commission. The chairman has said, no machines, no voting. To me, no machines, no elections. To me, that is a signal. Pressing at the fact that there will be no elections. He made it clear. He is not appealing to the people. He is not explaining the need for the machine. He is saying, if you don't accept this, there will be no elections. Wow. How, how, uh, uh, what kind of umpire is that? How independent is the commission? Who is he speaking for? I see the voice of the commission chairman, but the, the, the hands of Kabila. Mm. So it is going to be easy for Kabila to say, oh, I've done all that is possible. I provided machine, 160,000 of them. We got it at huge cost to ensure that there is, in your ways, a digitalized election. No, 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 no. But, but, the 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 but the people are not accepting. And the people <laughs> have the right to say, we don't trust you. The protest is about the fact that they don't trust him hmm. and his machines. Let us vote to the full glare of everybody. Body. Let everybody know have be able to count the votes and be sure who will win. All right. So outside that, the people will not rest. And like have been feared, there may be no elections. Wow. Fear, fear, trust issues just lingering, hovering, shrouding the electoral process or polity of the Aru Congo. They are protesting. Even so, uh, what they're carrying, yes, in the bill, the casket, the rotor, due machine. We don't want to take us back to the old method of voting. And uh, uh, Barry Robinson talked about one thing, the electoral chairman. He just said, look, this is what we stand for. No machine, no election. No election. Is that the voice of Jacob and, of course, the feel? of ESA. When we return after this break, we'll be explaining the statement of the electoral umpire in the Aru Congo. Who is he really speaking for? The president, the people, or the commission? You just joined us. This is Africa Discourse. We are taking a look at uh, the Aru Congo political situation and uh, the voting machine protest. They've been protesting massively, saying we don't know the kind of machine. You went to South Korea to get for an election that is scheduled to come up in barely two months' time. And some of them, according to the report, is not working. But the electoral umpire is saying if there, is, if there are no machines, 
there'll be no election. And from what my analysts are talking about, I'm not even sure that an election will take place come December. Situation shrouded in fear. And of course, the trust issue is very much there. But so Robinson talked about the statement credited to the electoral, electoral umpire, talking about the chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission of DR Congo. No machine, no election. Why do you think he's taking that hard stand? Well, it's, it's not far-fetched. The master has said, this is what I want. Before he went to purchase the machine, he would have already scheduled his thoughts. This is the plan that I'm looking for. And it's just that um, in this part of the world, we abuse words and meanings. Mm -hmm. We keep saying independent. I think they need to begin to define those words. And like my, my brother <laughs> said, independent of the people, dependent on government. You know, he who pays the paper details the children. Mm -hmm. The leadership of Africa see themselves as owners instead of servants and stewards. They see themselves as owners of the state. And so they dictate what happens and what shouldn't happen, which is not correct. I keep asking, a civil servant has, he comes to work, he signed for 35 years. When he gets to 35 years, he knows he must retire, mm -hmm. he must leave. He doesn't say, I'm the owner of the ministry. Oh, I've been permanent secretary. I, can, I must not retire. No. But a politician comes, you say you are giving five years or ten years. By the time you are finishing, you say, no, I don't want to go again. And you, 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 you want everybody to believe that you are the only human being who must be there, even when you are not doing anything to improve the life of the people you are supposed to be leading. So it is unfortunate that people come to say, and this again is my problem, people are giving appointments. If they have integrity and they have some measure of, of, of thought with them, they should be able to know when to say no to some things. You come to hold an election, it's on behalf of the people, not on behalf of government, on behalf of the people. And if this, the, the rules are no longer favorable for the people to exercise, you should be able to say no, this is not what the rule says. You know? But you find that people are, they get uh, uh, entrusted with responsibilities, and they begin to dance to the tune of the man in power because that's where he gets money. You know, it's what they get out of it that becomes the problem. It's not the service they ought to render. Mm. So for a, man to, for a man to come and say, no machine, no election, to me, in fact, the people should ask, the, they should dismiss that electoral commission. Mm. It's not even just a election. Oh, they should they dismiss should go the, to the man. place and seal up the place because that is not the voice of the people. Mm -hmm. You have not tested the machine. You have not, people are not aware of what has happened. You are saying if you don't like it, or whether you like it or not, without this you can't do it. You are only telling that there's no election. It's, it's a class statement. Mm -hmm. All right. Which the people must not raise. <coughs> Again, I think the African also should know. The resistance will not just be for two days. Because that's what African leaders just think. Oh, they will, they will so shout for two days, mm -hmm. and they go back and do the same thing goes on. They should sustain it. Mm -hmm. They sustain, should sustain it. Yes, yeah, sustain that anger against unjust rules mm -hmm. that have been used to enslave the people and perpetuate their, their, their ignorance over the years and liberate themselves from that and make sure that the things are done in accordance with it. There's a law that governs the Democratic Republic of Congo. Those laws should be upheld. And the right. judiciary, again, I want to trust the judiciary in Kenya for what they did during the election. Those are the kind of judiciary we are looking for. Unfortunately, judges have been the, the executive almost always want to pocket the judiciary so that even if you go to court, they, they will also win against the people, which is wrong. So they, but until the people themselves stand, which as they do it now, let them sustain it. All right. And then they must appeal with them to sack the electoral commission. All right. Now, can one deduce that there is an exchange of passes? I want to use so called terms now between the umpire and the government of the day. If yes, what should be done about it? He threw a little light on it. If no, what do you think? What should be the way forward in this situation? Well, you see, if you look at the whole scenario, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I discuss Africa and I draw home to Nigeria. We mm -hmm. had a situation in this country some time ago where Nigerians experienced when there is tranquility 
Okay, because when there is tranquility in a society, people begin to think reasonably and they ask reasonable questions. And um, when there is getting to the level of tranquility in Nigeria, something will happen hmm. that will divert people's attention and will begin to discuss, you know, irrelevant hmm. things and leave the real issues untouched. I think that is what Joseph Kabila is trying to create in DR Kongo. Hmm. Election is coming up, and this election, he knows already the mind of his people. Even if Joseph Kabila stands this election, okay, and allow a little bit of <coughs> credibility, I'm not saying full credibility, a little bit, a little bit, little bit hmm. he will be voted out massively and mercilessly. Okay, so having read the handwriting on the wall, what should we do? Create a situation where we will say it is the people themselves that rejected the elections. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in that scenario, definitely nature abhors vacuum. Okay, the state must run, and somebody must run as the president. Mm -hmm. And Joseph Kabila will continue. He's already there. Okay, so what I think would be the situation is that the citizens of DR Congo should insist that the elections must hold come 31st of December 2018. That is one. Two, they must insist that the electronic voting machine will not be used. Three, that the present umpire must conduct the elections and they should do option A4. Hmm. Let everybody queue behind his candidates. Let them see the electoral committee chairman, commission chairman, come to their, you know, wards to count them and then use their votes and give to Kabila or his agents. Hmm. Okay? <clears throat> now, in that, if they speak, they can organize their own election if Kabila refuses to organize the election and vote their own candidates. And then there will be two presidents. Wow. The president of the people, remember <laughs> what happened? And the president remember, of the government. Yeah, remember what happened when somebody declared himself mm -hmm. as the people's president mm -hmm. and the other one, mm -hmm. you know, elected by the majority of the voters. And later on they had a deal behind the people. Yes. Africa for you. And <laughs> No, no, the beauty of the deal still remains that the person that the majority of Kenyans voted for, mm. at least as announced, is their president. Okay, so the situation of. Uh, is it Cote d'Ivoire? Yeah, the Democratic Republic of Congo. No, 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 no. Mm. That Nigeria mm. had to intervene mm. through the ECOWAS instruments. Yeah, Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. Yeah, okay, Bagel. to say that, look, you must respect the will of the, the people. people. Okay, let that happen in DR Congo. So you're saying power of let's government. See, let's see whether Joseph Kabila will not pack his loot and leave. Okay, you, you, you just, you, you just because drew. anything outside yeah. of this mm. will be the citizens playing into the games planned out by Joseph Kabila and his cronies. All right, now you're talking about the master stroke. It's like the die is cast, the board is set, and chess pieces have been moved to get a particular point. There is unrest already. They're rejecting the machine. And the opponent says the machine or no election. From what you've deduced here, sirs, don't you think we are acting foolishly, knowing fully well that if this unrest should persist till December, there'll be no election giving Kabila what he's always yearned for to remain in power? Barrister Robinson. <clears throat> I will not think so at all. It is clear that if they are able to sustain this election for another three weeks, the worst that will happen is that Kabila will flee the country. It is just now non-violent. Nobody is saying that it cannot become violent. The problem with Africans is we or they, the leaders, do not know when to surrender. Mm. This is the time we know a good warrior. A good warrior should know when to surrender. 
Kabila isn't. What happened to the father may not happen to him because I see him already making plans to flee the country. Mm. He won't be the first president in that country to do so. Yeah. We are sure that the protesters, as we see them now, will continue. But the situation has been made so unbearable for the people that they cannot take no for an answer. Look at the, the excuse of the Independent Electoral Commission. They want the election results to come out fast. Hmm. So it must be uh, the machines. They want to be able to uh, uh, carry less load. So it must be the machine. They want to use fewer people to use the machine. But you put there to dictate to the people or to listen to the voice of the people. Are you representing the people or you are representing the president? Because even among the president's men, I know that there are dissenting voices. Nobody wants to drown with a drowning man. If you try to, put, to, to, to rescue him and you are not able to, you let him go. And that's what's going to happen to Kabila. I do not see a situation where the protest will continue till December and they now say, oh, no election, Kabila remains. He will not remain. Nobody in the DR Congo will allow him to remain. If he has anybody who is close to him that he listens to, he should be advised to listen to the people, conduct the people's election, and go away quietly. Otherwise, I see him becoming a refugee very soon in one of the very many uh, neighboring countries that they have. Hmm. Having said so, I also want to say that people do not believe that the, the, the Congolese are reasonable. Is it in this jet age that you are rejecting digitalization? Mm. It is obvious. Like when in America, it took just 19 uh, days to be able to hack into the, the machines. In the DR Congo, I'm sure the machines have been programmed to produce a particular result. Mm. People are aware of this. I don't see them getting tired of the protest. I don't see the protest ending in confusion. I see the confusion that may arise as one that will be against uh, Joseph Kabila. Right. The people will not lose out in this protest. Mm. People will not, they, lose, they, out they will not lose out in this protest. All right. the, the people of the DR Congo are used to protest, they are used to fighting, they are used to wars. Mm. And so this will not be an exception. And almost always, their leaders have been the losers. Okay. Our time is almost up. I'm going to give um, all of you one minute each to summarize. What advice do you have for these people? Because we are global or international. They are watching. They are, are online live streaming. They are seeing everything. They are listening, trying to see or hear the way the world is reacting to what is happening right now in DR Congo. What advice do you have for Joseph Kabila, the electoral empire, and of course the people of DR Congo? Because December 31st is fast approaching. One minute each. Summarize. I will ask the people of uh, DRC to take courage from the happening in Gambia to what happened in Ivory Coast. Mm. There are examples that if they are united and they know what they are doing, they will win. Mm. I will also ask Kabila to take uh, understanding. Mm. Uh, Jamel never thought that he would leave Gambia, mm. but today he's a refugee. Mm. So if he wants his life to have a meaning tomorrow, let him conduct the election peacefully and leave right. so that the people of Congo can have their life. All right, thank you so much, Reverend. Barrister Chima. Well, I will advise the electoral umpire first. Mm. They should take a cue from the Nigerian electoral umpire, mm. who has said even if the Electoral Act is amended to make it a requirement to use the electronic voting system, because our citizens are not prepared and the time is short for us to educate them on how to use this, mm. we will not use it. Mm. They should learn from that. Okay. And this is an election that is going to happen next year mm. as against their own election that is going to happen this December. year. Mm. Okay? Right. And for the citizens, a people united can never be defeated. Mm. So okay. they should continue in unity and speak and stand together one man cannot defeat the entire country. And Thank you. Kabila, Thank you. All right. Please, we love you so much. <laughs> mm, as our brother, yes. we don't want anything to happen to you. Just do the right thing. Organize the election. Mm. 
the way your people want it, who knows? The president that may emerge may be sympathetic to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barrister Chima. Barrister Robinson, one minute. Well, they say those the gods want to destroy, yeah. they first make man. Yeah. I see Kabila running man just now. Mm. And the only way he can be out of this insanity is for him to listen to the voice of the people. I don't see the Congolese bowing out in this protest. I see them continuing. I see the protest gathering more momentum by the day, and I see them succeeding. All right, thank you so much, gentlemen. I appreciate your wonderful analysis. Ask is to report, as I used to say. We keep reporting back to you because right now, DRU Congo, from what they've said, they've known on race and they are resilient. They keep pressing, pushing, fighting. But while they are fighting, who is gaining? Two years after the tenure of Joseph Kabila's term, so to speak, has elapsed, he is still very much on the ground. Will this increase the number of years going to stay? We don't know. Are they going to call out election? Let's just wait to find out. From all of us in the studio, it's bye for now. <laughs>